Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. I, uh, this is tax season, decided to go get my taxes done. And uh, it, it's pretty pathetic when you go take what uh, YouTube gives you in payment, Google payment. And it was about like $3,000 for the whole year. And took it to my accountant and basically looked at it, man, ah, this is nothing, you know. Uh, that's how impressive he was with it. I don't think people understand that people, you know, make all these videos, take their time out, answer questions, just to make $3,000 a year in 12 months. That's not a minimum wage. You know, for the hundreds of videos that you may put out, uh, YouTube does not pay a lot to make these videos. And then people asking questions on top of that when when they make comments and you're taking your time out for not even minimum wage. And that's how YouTube has set it up. Their algorithms, however they set it up, the people who have the most followers get the most attention. And uh, since I, I've been doing this since what, 2014, and I have over 15,000 200 followers, you know, are people who have subscribed. And that's how YouTube looks at things as the subscribers. If most people, and this is like maybe like 69% of the people that watch these videos, they don't subscribe. And if you don't subscribe, it doesn't get out there to the public. That's just the way it is. People know it. They don't care. They just watch them and they move on. Uh, if you don't like a video, uh, hitting the like button, if you don't subscribe to it, it just doesn't go anywhere. The YouTube channel just doesn't make any money. Uh, mine doesn't really make any money. And you wonder why the information can't get out to the people. It's just because the odds are very much against you. I've even seen YouTube people complain about they make YouTube videos every single day. And they actually have lost people. Because as things, their YouTube channel gets older and older, uh, they wind up losing people that uh, somehow get uh, lost because of the way the algorithm is with Google and YouTube channels. But I just wanted to let you know, I'm not really making any money off this. Most of the money I do make off of it, most of it I do make, I buy new things with it. Because you may wonder on my channel, well, I'm buying this, or I'm buying this kind of light, or I bought uh, these kind of skimmers. Most of this all comes from what I make from YouTube to pay for it. So literally, I'm taking that money and investing it into products, food, and stuff like that so I can let you know how's it doing. And basically, you end up with nothing in your pocket. So you're doing it basically for free. And... Uh, I can see where people then go to Patreons and other things of uh, uh, because it uh, it doesn't pay to do videos. Actually, it just doesn't pay except for the big people who and a lot of the people who do have a lot of followers. They I don't know how they wind up getting them. They wind up getting them, but it takes a lot more time than I guess I want to invest into it. Especially, I don't want to go on forums. I don't want to go on. Uh, Facebook. I, I do post on Facebook when I do a video sometimes or on X, which is Twitter. Uh, but other than that, no, I don't want to get heavily involved into forums or anything else to try to grab more people to watch my videos. That to me is uh, uh, just too cons time consuming and it's not a major income for me. As you can see, $3,000 is not going to make or break somebody on their income. But anyway, I just want to tell you that that uh, that I guess you don't think about it, that a lot of people are doing these videos to help other people, and they're not making anything. A lot of stuff that, like I said, I spend that money on a lot of products or new products to see if they work. Like, for instance, the uh, auto top-off, you know, from the Hager that I did a review on that I've been using now. For quite some time, a lot of people have made their concerns. They are, 
They don't want to buy an auto top off. The auto top off are good if you have a lot of evaporation, you know, out of your aquarium. And like the new aquarium I just made uh, went smoothly. The six gallon and the 15 gallon, uh, the 15 gallon has a wear and has a sump in the back of it. A lot of tanks have that now. You can put a sump on the bottom or behind the aquarium. The A lot of aquariums have that. It's built in, but they have a problem with evaporation, more so than if you have a canister filter. Because even a hang on the back filter is going to have more evaporation than a canister filter. Can, if, depending on how you are, your outlet is in your aquarium. Okay, that will depend on how much evaporation. But if you have a lid or don't have a lid. But anyway, those uh, tanks that have sumps, whether they're in the back or underneath, seem to have more of the problems of water evaporating. And therefore, an auto top off comes in handy. But there are cheap ones. And a lot of people complain that, oh, I'm having problems with the auto top off. Uh, the buzzer keeps going off. Or uh, it keeps, um, it, it, it breaks or this, well, if it breaks, there's nothing you can do. You know, if, if your plug in breaks, gets loose from unplugging it or plugging it in, that's just the product itself, quality of the product. But there's something like I do that, uh, that I found out with these auto top offs and you may try it. If you have an auto top off and you're getting like the Hager one works fine. You just have to keep it clean. A lot of people say, oh, it worked fine for a few months, and then it didn't. Uh, if you keep them clean, they work fine. They will keep your aquarium topped off. But uh, the best thing I found out is to get one of those, uh, what do they call it? They're like a timer, but they run off of your foam. And these Timers you can buy at uh, Lowe's. You can buy them off of Amazon. They're nothing much to them. For example, like this one right here. Here's one of them you buy. This, this basically replaces your mechanical timers or your digital timers that were real big. Basically, it just sends a signal to your phone through the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And this is this one's a, a Enbrighton is the name. Now, these Enbrighton little plugins here you can buy from a Lowe's or you can get them from uh, Amazon. I find these to be very reliable. They, uh, I tried other brands and I don't find them to be as reliable as these at Brighton ones. In other words, if the electric goes out to re get them back up going and stuff like that. So these, these little timers, what you do though is you t connect your auto top off to one of these and then you go on your phone uh, and all you do is set up when you want the auto top off to come on and how long you want it to come on. And I find this to work the best because I know some people have contacted me and said, I'm having problems making noise that, you know, these auto top offs aren't that good. Now they're spending $200 on an auto top off. So, <coughs> excuse me, one way of solving that, of course, with this, and I'll tell you how you do it. You connect the auto, auto top off to that. So there's where your power source is. Now, you connect it up to your phone. Let's say I have, for example, the tank behind me. The Because it has a wear, it seems to evaporate a little bit. I have a container and everything, which I showed you in my video on the side, that um, will last over a week or more of auto-topping off that 15-gallon aquarium. No big deal. Okay, but we want its reliability. So what I have is about at 8.45 in the morning, it turns on for five minutes. The auto top off realizes that the water is low and fills it right up to the fill line. And it shuts down. Remember, it only stays on for five minutes. As it, that's what I have it for. Then it shuts down again for the entire day until five o'clock in the evening. Turns on for five more minutes. Auto tops off. The aquarium to the fill line and shuts back down again. This way you eliminate uh, it running all day and sometimes showing error. And what I mean by this is uh, 
these auto top offs, all of them, whether you're using a float or whether you're using the electronic eye, they all read the water level constantly. And as soon as that water level drops, it's not very far and it turns on again. Well, what happens is, let's say you have a wear or your, you know, which a lot of tanks now do use sumps and stuff like this. And uh, a snail gets in where the grid is, where the inlet is, a leaf, a snail, a dead fish even floats up there and clogs it up. Well, the auto top off will see that and automatically fill it up, okay, to its fill line. Well, as soon as that object moves out of the way or is removed, then your tank is overfilled and it will go up to the auto top off where it's showing it's you've overfilled the aquarium and then alarm goes off and it, it, you know lights go off and annoying beeping goes off uh it, it it's a problem so i have mine come on twice a day do i need it to be twice a day no once a day would be enough and for a very short time you can put the time in it you want it to run one minute two minutes five minutes you put down a time you want but because I feed the fish in the morning, I look to make sure that the grate to the wear is open. All the slots don't have a leaf or snail crawling on it. If it does, I remove it. And then at 845, it comes on and fills it to the right level. And it won't come back on again until the evening feeding. When I go back to feed the fish, then I can look once again at the wear and make sure it's open, has no obstacle blocking it. Okay, and then it will come on at five o'clock exactly for five minutes and fill up whatever evaporated through the day. And that seems to eliminate 100% of your problems by letting it shut down because I have to admit the truth. The thing has a beep on it, the Hager, auto top off, it beeps, and my wife can hear it in the other room. And she said, what's that beeping noise? So I go in there and I see there's a snail crawling across the where, the slots, and it filled up. And when the snail moves away, it's too full, and it's letting you know that the where is too full because of the way they, they set them uh, that's, that's just the nature of the beast. So if you don't take water out of the wear, the thing will just keep beeping. And that was uh, something that people brought up to me. The thing just keeps beeping, you know, and accidents do happen. So that's one way of sol solving the whole thing by adding one of these onto it and only having your auto top off come on when you're like feeding. So you can look to see, is there anything obstructing the inlet. If there isn't, then it will fill up and you'll have zero problems. Anyhow, another thing I wanted to bring up that uh, um, some people will bring up natural systems and they will bring up how our aquariums are like natural systems and everything. And you, you hear this a lot, right? You'll go to other channels and how our systems are like natural systems. Our systems are not like natural systems. Okay. We have H2O, natural system has H2O, and uh, we utilize bacteria. But after that, things start getting a little different. And there's things like uh, epistilius, uh, memento, rotifiers, aspardiscus, that are, and there's more. That, you know, that are in natural systems that we may not want in our systems, but they exist in natural systems. Uh, uh, filamentous bacteria. Mm, you never hear about that in our system, but they're in natural systems. There's lots of things, bacteria and, and natural systems, that uh, exist and a lot of things that exist in natural systems that cling on to bacteria because they're so tiny they cling on to bacteria and they are part of natural systems 
Natural Sada, let's see, the, let me see. I was, I was trying to get something out there. The chemical secession in anoxic aquariums along with lakes, lake waters as a source of molecular diversity of organic matter. And there's all kinds of articles and stuff written about that where uh, they talk about OM, OM, which is organic matter, and uh, then you have DOM, which is dissolved organic matter, which plays a very large part in the natural system versus our aquariums if you're not using anoxic conditions. Anoxic conditions with some may... The, the anoxic conditions, in case this is your first time here where everybody would know, is the conditions that take care of the nitrogen cycle. Oh, wow, I never heard of that. Well, it does. It's conditions that exist where there, it's dissolved uh, DOMs or OMs, and these conditions have to exist like they do in natural systems in our aquariums to finish and complete the nitrogen cycle. Uh, nitrogen cycle is completed with specialized bacteria that can steal oxygen when the oxygen levels become anoxic or even to the point of they do not exist. If those bacteria find that they are starving for oxygen and very low levels where oxygen uh, is almost immeasurable without the right kind of equipment, they will steal the oxygen from nitrates and leave nitrogen gas. And you will see this in sewer treatment facilities, for example, through bubbles uh, coming from the water, which means that is your N2, your nitrogen. So this denitrification process is the end results of the nitrogen cycle. And it's never talked about. But yet in natural systems, it exists, but it really is never talked about in our system. Most people just say, oh, I don't have any nitrates. I don't have, yeah, but are you dependent upon plant matter as your main source? Like the aquariums I set up, the six gallon aquarium, and the 15 gallon aquarium um, that I set up, I set them both up with plenums and they went just fine. They're working just fine. Okay, no problems. I'm using homemade lights and everything else, about the the easiest aquarium I have ever set up. They don't have water speeding through the under gravels or your plenum at the speed of light, which is how they should be used correctly. They're not dependent really when you make a plenum on specialized substrates unless you want to enhance it um, to make anoxic conditions by adding, you know, kitty litter or your oil dries or anything else. You can enhance it by using those products. Is it a necessity, necessity of, of you have to? No. You can use any kind of substrate you want as long as fluids are moving. And this is what creates the anoxic conditions that uh, the simulatory denitrification, simulative denitrification. And uh, which then will take nitrates and steal the oxygen, the bacteria that does it. And these are heterotrophic bacteria. They multiply very quickly. They're very fast multiplying when they start multiplying. And usually when you set up an aquarium, like I set up the ones like that are behind me, when you set up these aquariums like this the correct way and you can add like, a quick start, Fritz sign seven, something like that. You usually end up with zero problems with ammonia and everything. Zero problems. You set it up and the next day you can go out shopping for your fish, you know, once you get them set up because they establish so quickly the bacteria into the substrate a lot faster than aquariums that have the substrate thrown at the bottom. Even if the substrate's only one inch thick thrown at the bottom, these aquariums establish far faster because fluids are moving through the substrate, like natural systems. If you go to a sewage treatment facility, of course, 
fluids are moving to the point where it's being controlled by oxygen, taken away, giving. And some of the things I just mentioned, uh, like epistilius and uh, mementos, for example, rotifiers, they check these things out to find out how the system in a sewage treatment plant is working. How, if they find too much of one thing, they know if it's working correctly. Too much of another thing, they know it's not working, and they know how to adjust and make changes to sewage treatment plants. They are far, far more superior in bacteria load than natural systems. Okay, natural systems do not have the bacteria load that like sewer treatment facilities have. So these uh, oxygen-free habitats, while they're not really oxygen-free, it's just the oxygen is either so low or they could go to oxygen-free, which would be anaerobic conditions. Let's say I have written down here, habitats with aquatic systems are often temporary transit and spatterly constrained and there were typical perceived as sites of modest DOM uh, processing and mineralizations. Studies specifically targeted anoxic water, however, have challenged this view by demonstrating relatively high rates of microbial activity and DOM removal relative to oxic environments. Okay, I just wanted to re read you that because this is this is right from sewer treatment facilities, what they found out. So having anoxic conditions improves your aquarium, just like it does with sewer treatment facility, your DOM and your toxic waters, just by having anoxic conditions. So I wanted to bring that up because a lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand the science behind it. But here it is in an article that was written. I'm going to have links below. So if you wish to go and read any of this information about what I have just said, how anoxic conditions improve water quality from sewer treatment facilities, uh, you can go read them yourself and you determine what you want to think then. No matter how the hobbyist wants to talk, they talk a big talk, you know, the microbiology is not there when they're talking. There's a lot more into it. So what I've just told you about oxygen-free zone and oxygen zones and what they're finding out about how the stability of the zones are, they found out uh, the anoxic zone is a lot more stable and does a lot more work than a zone that is oxygen free, which would be placing your substrate directly at the bottom of an aquarium, unless that substrate is constantly being moved to allow oxygen to get into it. So that's it for this video. Sorry it was so long, the video, but I thought I ought to get some of those things cleared up about YouTube about the uh, auto top off. I definitely was thinking that they're, they're good devices, auto top offs, if you use them correctly. And one thing I found out is adding them to some sort of switch. And of course, I did have to bring in about the anoxic conditions, about what sewage treatment plants are coming up with more and more information on these conditions and what really exists in these kind of conditions. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. You know, I know it's a big hassle. People just like watching these videos. They don't, I don't want to subscribe, but you know, it really helps get the information out to other people. That's all it's doing. You know, I understand why people are saying it because they want money. I'm not making any money as you can see, but it gets the information out to other people all over the world because then YouTube changes the way their algorithm is and, and they change the way uh, they present your videos and how they can get out to other people. Otherwise, the videos just get buried and you really have to start searching just to get a decent video to learn anything because people just are lazy and they, don't wanna, they just want to watch it. No, nah, I don't want to subscribe, you know. But 
why does it hurt you if it, if you do it? I mean, in one way. So, you know, not that it's a money maker. So until next time, happy fish keeping.